Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph logarithmic equations with transformations, um, other than just reflections and dilation, stretching and compressing. So basically what we're going to be doing is we added back our two variables, h and k, which again, remember, h is going to be shifting your graph left or right. k is going to be shifting your graph up or down. Um, please also remember, though, that we can write, where's my blue? I lost, there's my blue. Please also remember that we can write x minus h like this, x minus h, and put that h in parentheses because h is technically in the positive. So um, whenever we're doing this, it's always that h is always kind of like in the opposite direction, which confuses students all the time. Um, and even though we have gone over it in different videos, I wanted to just kind of highlight it again. Um, let's see, do I have at least a plot? Okay, yeah. So um, I'll kind of take a step here with this one. Um, and you know, kind of explaining it, but then I'll kind of move forward with it a little bit quicker for the rest of the videos because I don't want to be redundant for those of you that understand it. Uh, but basically, when we're graphing with multiple transformations, the main important thing we want to do is graph our parent graph. Now, basically, we're always going to have a our parent graph is always going to have an x-intercept as long as the coefficient of our x is one, which we have in case of all of these, except for our final last problem, which I again will explain at the end. But since all of the rest of our variables, our x has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, that's just a reflection, um, we know that the parent graph is going to look somewhat like this. 1 comma 0, and goes like that with a nice little vertical asymptote. Okay? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take that graph and we're going to transform it based on the transformations or reflections. So um, we're going to, you know, oh, did I choose all? Oh, there's a couple different bases. And remember, like numbers in front or the bases, those are going to affect the graph. You know, the graph could either be stretched vertically, the graph could be compressed vertically, and that's all dependent on the bases or the number or the um, or the co or the number that's multiplying by a logarithm. But again, I'm not going to be concerned about the perfect, you know, kind of slope you might say of the graph. I'm just want to kind of get the the main version of the graph correct, as well as apply the uh, operations. You can create a table, or you can use a graphing calculator to kind of see you know, how perfect your graph is compared to what the actual answer is. However, they're all going to look pretty close to the same. OK, so let's get into uh, y equals log base 5 of x minus 1. Remember, I stated that this can be written as x minus h. OK, so hopefully you see that I can put parentheses around here, this 1. So it's x minus h, x minus 1. x minus h, x minus 1. So therefore, h is equal to a positive 1. What that's going to tell me to do is I'm going to be shifting the graph to the right one unit. Um, since the only thing I have is a base here of 5, which is just going to be affecting kind of my transformation of the graph, <clears throat> I'm just going to sketch my normal parent graph. And then I know I'm going to be shifting my graph one unit to the right. So that's going to move over there. Now, what's very important about transformations, especially horizontal transformations with logarithms, remember we have this, remember we have this asymptote here, right? Well, if I'm shifting the graph one unit to the right, that means my asymptote has to be shifted one unit to the right. So that's very important because now what that's going to do is that's going to change our domain and range. The domain is a set of all x values. How far left does the graph go? How far to the right does the graph go? Well, you can see in our typical standard form, in our stickle graph, the asymptote was at 0. So the graph, the far as left the graph went, was at 0. Well, now the farthest the left graph goes is positive 1. And the farthest it goes to the right is infinity. So the domain is 1, comma 0. The range still goes infinitely down, infinitely up. So that's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. <clears throat> All right, so now we have an ln of x. And again, ln of x is just a logarithm with base e. All right, I'll write it in for this one, but I'm not going to write it for the other ones. Again, that's just going to be affecting. It's, it's basically like 2.71 as your base. Um, so it might not, <clears throat> it might increase. You know, it's not going to go out as far as, you know, 5. But it's still going to look the exact same. It's just a difference of how, this, how that graph kind of slopes. But it's still going to have an x-intercept of 1, comma 0. Um, however, so I'll graph 1, comma 0. And then what's happening to the graph is this plus 4. Well, the plus 4 is not, in, is not inside the function. It would be in parentheses if it was inside the function. So since it's not inside the function, that means we're just shifting the graph up or down. 
since that's a positive 4 plus k plus, plus 4, it's not the opposite like negative h, I'm just going to move it up 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, um, I still have a vertical asymptote at 0. And by shifting the graph up or down, that does not affect my vertical asymptote. So my domain and range are going to be unchanged. 0 to infinity. Range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. All right, um, in the next example, I have y equals log times x plus 3 minus 6. Uh, remember this x minus h idea that I did? Well, remember, plusing a, or adding 3 is the same thing as subtracting a negative. So I could rewrite that as x minus negative 3. So therefore, x minus h. So what you could say is h is equal to negative 3, k is equal to negative 6. Well, when h is equal to negative 3, h is left to right. That means I'm shifting my graph 3 units to the left. And when k is negative 6, that means I'm shifting my graph 6 units down. Um, my base here, in this case, is not written, so it's going to be 10. Again, that's just going to be affecting kind of the, the uh, <coughs> compression of the graph. But my standard parent graph is going to be the same, which is going to be at 1, 0. Still going to have my vertical asymptote at uh, x equals 0. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x-intercept and shift it to the left, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now to graph, <coughs> to graph this, I think it's important to know where the asymptote is. I have a vertical asymptote. The whole graph is being shifted to the left, 3. So this vertical asymptote needs to move 3, 1, 2, 3. Shifting it down is not going to affect a vertical asymptote. So therefore, the graph is going to look something like this. But it's very important. You can see that now our domain and range are going to be are changed. My domain is now, instead of it going to 0 or as far as it going to 1, now the domain goes all the way to negative 3. And it goes continuous to infinity, <coughs> whereas the range is going to be unchanged, negative infinity to infinity. All right, next example here. Uh, again, this 3 is just going to be affecting my vertical compression and stretching. Uh, my minus 5, we know, is now from my first example, is being shifted in the graph 5 units to the right. But now I have a negative, which is going to be reflecting about the x-axis. Because remember, when you multiply by a negative outside the function, you reflect about the x-axis. When you multiply a negative inside the function, that reflects about the y-axis. So let's just do the standard graph here. Okay, so I'm going to shift this graph five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to reflect it about the y-axis. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, whenever you're shifting, you should definitely change the asymptote. The asymptote is at zero. That's being shifted to the right five. One, two, three. Oh, I didn't move this one. One, two, three, four, five. Asymptote gets moved five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I just connect my graph. Okay, My domain is now the graph goes only as far as left as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 to infinity, whereas my range is unchanged, negative infinity to infinity. All right, in the next one, we have a fraction. But that's OK. It's just like the 3. You know, the 3 is going to stretch it. Well, the 1 fourth is just going to compress it. But again, I'm not worried about that. Uh, there are ver our coefficient of our x is 1, so we know that the x-intercept is going to be 1. And again, if you don't believe me, replace y with 0 and solve for x. Convert it to exponential form and then solve for x. And what, you will under what you'll see is that the x-intercept is going to be uh, 1. So let's just go ahead and do that and then go through our transformations. So we have 1. And again, remember these two numbers are just affecting how fast the graph grows. I do this graph. This 8 and the 1 fourth, stretch it, compress it, and so forth. So I'm not worried about the accuracy of my graph. I'm worried about where is the x-intercept, as well as the transformations that need to be applied. Again, you can use a table or use graphing technology to see which of those three graphs like, best represent you know, that function. Just not the purpose of my video. It would take way too long um, for me to show all the points and do all that work and so forth. And I, I want to rather do a lot of examples so you get some variety. 
All right, so now we look at our transformations. We have the x minus 2, which is going to be shifting my graph two units to the right. So we're going to be shifting the graph two units to the right and then up one. So I'm just going to go from this point up two, to the right two, up one. Since I'm shifting it two units to the right, my x-intercept that was at x equals 0 is now going to be at x equals 2. Uh, there's no transformation. So now my domain is going to be from 2 to infinity, and my range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, this next one, we have multiplying by negative inside the function. So now that's going to be reflecting about the y-axis. So it's going to be like flipping about the y-axis rather than the x-axis like I did over here. So again, the main important thing, oh, and also, I need to see I have a plus 3. So let's just go ahead and graph our parent function here. Okay, so I'm going to shift the graph up 3. Now I need to reflect it about the uh, y-axis. So it's going to be up 3, now to the left 1. So the graph's going to look something like this. Now, by reflecting it, my asymptote has not changed. My asymptote is going to remain at y equals 0. However, my domain, you can see that now the graph goes infinitely to the left. There's no asymptote that's stopping how far it's going to the left. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to 0, and my range is from negative infinity to infinity. All right, next, uh, this is a good one because now we have two reflections. Uh, we have a reflection about the x-axis and a reflection about the y-axis. Let me just label them. x-axis reflection, y-axis. So the best thing to do is just do one at a time. It doesn't matter which one you do first. Uh, the two is just going to be you know, uh, um, compressing the graph. So we have 1, 0. Oops. Okay, I'll just work from left to right. I'll reflect about the x-axis. So that's going to look like this. And then I'll reflect about the y-axis, which would look like this. Okay, oops, I could probably fill that in, right? Okay, so that's what my graph looks like. So it looks totally different than all the rest of them. However, my domain is going to be exactly the same as this one. Because um, ref the reflecting over the x-axis, if you remember, did not affect the domain. Or uh, where was that? Oh, it was over there, but I had a transformation. Crap. Um, I didn't do just a regular one. But reflecting over the x-axis doesn't change the domain. If you were to take this one and flip it over, the domain is still remaining the same. But reflecting over the y-axis changes our domain. So our domain is from negative infinity to 0. And our range in this case is from negative infinity to infinity. OK. Last example. Um, again, to kind of talk about why we have our asymptote. Um, let me see. So to get this one, you really kind of got to understand a couple points here. Um, and I'm actually going to erase these to go, why do we have our asymptotes? Why do our asymptotes occur? And I, you know, I have a video for why, where the asymptotes come from. But if we just look at a regular graph, um, log base 3 of x, OK? Now, <clears throat> the asymptotes occur. In this one, we know that the asymptote this graph looks something like this, with an asymptote at 0. Now, why do we have an asymptote at 0? Well, that means x value 0 is undefined. So what would happen if we put log base 3 of 0? Well, rewriting this in exponential form, 3 to, the y, 3 to what power gives you 0? And that's undefined. There is no value that we can take 3, raise it to a power, and give it 0, because 3 to the 0 power is 1. So there is no number. So that's why we have this asymptote. OK? So when x is equal to 0, or when inside our parentheses is equal to 0, we have an asymptote. Now, for each one of these equations, um, you could see that x minus 2, when that's equal to 0, x equals 2. Where was our asymptote? At 2. Over here, x minus 5 is equal to 0. Solve for x, x equals 5. Where is our asymptote? 5. So when you look at this problem, I automatically understand that, you know what? My asymptote is not going to occur at 9. Because what we need to do is to find the asymptote. What we're going to need to do is graph it. Or I'm sorry, solve for x. 
just like, we, just like I did here, you set whatever's inside your function, set it equal to 0. By doing that, x equals 9 fifths, or let me give you the decimal approximation, 1.8. Now, that's very important, because if I'm going to graph this, I need to know where this asymptote is. The asymptote is not over 9 like it was here. Here, there's no coefficient of x, so we just shifted it over 5 units. That's where the new asymptote is. Here, we have a coefficient of 5. So it's not, our graph is not being shifted 9 units to the right. And that's one of the major th problems that students have with this. The graph is not being shifted over 9 units to the right. It's only being shifted over 1.8. So I'm just going to approximate here. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. OK, but now we still need to find the x-intercept. And if you remember to find the x-intercept, what I did in the previous problems, for instance, you know, y equals log base 3 to the x, the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So when x was equal to 0, that was how we found the asymptote. When y is equal to 0 is going to be our asymptote. So if I did that here, log base 3 to x, now I rewrite this in exponential form, and I get 1 equals x. That's why whenever there is no coefficient there, we always knew the x-intercept was equal to 1. And you could have done that with all of these problems, and for every answer, you would have got x equals 1, every single one. But whenever you have a coefficient in front of that x, it's going to change the x-intercept. So let's see what that's going to, where that's going to change to. So I'll take this equation, and I'll replace y with 0. We put 10 in as my base, and I'll do 10 to the 0 power equals 5x minus 9. Because again, remember what I'm doing is I'm rewriting it in exponential form. That's 1 equals 5x minus 9, plus 9, plus 9. 10 equals 5x, divide by 5, divide by 5, x equals 2. So now my x-intercept is at 2. OK? And now I can go ahead and graph. I know it's going to look just like everything else. There's no other reflections. I don't know the stretching or the compressing, which, you know, the base 10. But I can get a good idea of what the graph's going to look like. My domain is now going to be from my asymptote, which was 9 fifths. So I'll say 9 fifths to infinity. And my range is going to be unchanged, negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the logarithmic, equa logarithmic function equations uh, when, when given multiple transformations. Thanks.